Hi everyone, Happy New Year. This is my first video of 2022. My name is Ira Fay, and I am excited to share this game with you. This is my first league game, and I am in tier one this year, so um, there tend to be maybe stronger players. And my first game is against Mad Robin, and we decided that for both of our league games, we were going to use two action tokens for the free people. So I wanna just jump into the game, but before I do, I wanna let everybody know that the annual world tournament is open for registration now. I'll include a link for it in the description of the video, but if you have any interest in competitive War of the Ring play. I hope you'll join. It's completely free to enter and it's friendly competition. It's not it's not too serious. So check it out and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. But I organize it and it's I think it's a lot of fun. Okay, so let's kick it off. I am playing Shadow and my opponent is playing Free. And you know, I'm fine with um, Nazgul Strike as an early card. You know, there, there are you know, better cards that would be possible to draw, but but this isn't too bad. I'm happy to get um, two musters. So this is a fine opening for me. And I allocated one eye. You know, maybe there's some argument to be made for not allocating any, but I'm I'm happy to I would rather sometimes roll a couple too many eyes than to not have any eyes on turn one. All right. So my opponent starts by moving. What else can you do when you have three character dice? And I miss. And then I get Isengard toward war. They move again. And on three dice, on fives, I miss. So that's relatively low odds. Obviously, it feels bad to have three eyes and not get any hits on two moves. And then I get Saruman. And my opponent musters the elves towards war. I think all things being equal, mustering the elves makes a lot of sense. And then I start getting my armies moving slowly, but, you know, not nothing. And then this is an interesting choice. You move again on the third time. And they decided not to. They they moved a leader and a regular from Fords of Eisen into Helm's Deep. And, you know, I don't know what else you can do with that die. Um, I guess it's something. It's a little tricky for me to figure out what, what would be better with that die. If you don't want to use a ring right away, which makes sense, then what else do you do with that? Obviously, Bilbo's song is unplayable. I guess you could separate a character, like separate one hobbit to the Shire or something in case you're going to draw fear fire foes. I don't know. This isn't bad though. This isn't this isn't bad if you don't want to move again and then your third movement you're getting hit right into Moria. Leave in the leave in comments below. What would you do with this character die? It's actually surprisingly tricky given the cards in hand. All right. So, I continue to move armies. I decide to move my South Rounds and Easterlings to West Rondor because I think it's going to be a while before I'm likely to get Corsairs of Umbar and be able to play it. And if and when I do, I can move them back to Umbar and then attack if, if necessary. So maybe this is a little premature, but I wasn't sure exactly where this Dol Guldur army was going and I was thinking maybe I could muster with them at the start of next turn or get some mustering card that, that could be relevant for it. There are two different mustering cards in the strategy deck that I could draw. So that's why I left this army and Dol are here, though I certainly intend to send them north to the Woodland Realm. Okay, um, my opponent draws Scouts, which is always great to see early, and an Ent card, which is not relevant until Gandalf shows up. And I get Rage of the Dunlandings, which is nice because it's going to let me build up some army in Moria. And give it to us is always, always nice to see red tiles. Okay, I have to allocate one eye, so I do. I roll no additional eyes, and my opponent gets, again, a bunch of character movement. So the Fellowship can really be flying here, and because I have Saruman, there's a decent chance that they're going to get Gandalf this round, which is obviously great to get Gandalf round two. All right, safe movement uh, through Moria, which is great. And then... And maybe, I mean, maybe there's some argument to be made for trying to play a card, but literally none of these cards are actually playable. The red arrow is not yet playable because Gondor is not active. So it's it's a little bit of a shame 
to have Gandalf as guide and Palantirs to use, but no cards to play. But sometimes that's just how it goes. That That is one of the benefits of the action tokens. If my opponent wanted to, they could draw a card. Um, it's It feels a little early to use it, and they got such a, a good roll. I don't, I don't think it's probably worth it. Okay, so I decide to spend some time mustering in North Dunland. Now, I could have used the Voice of Saruman and gotten two regulars for only a single die and then played and then played uh, Rage of the Dunlandings, and maybe I should have done that. But what happened? I think this gets me two hit points, and two regulars are also two hit points. So I think I just preferred to have the leadership, and if I'm willing to use a second muster anyway, that's worth it, and I'm not going to rush the Witch King this round. So I sort of decide I'm not getting the Witch King Maybe I should have rushed the the Witch King and get and got the elves to war right away. But my feeling is I have Rage of the Dunlinings. I can bring them to Lorien and simultaneously bring this army to Woodland Realm and then have two elven strongholds under siege, expecting that my opponent is probably not going to be mustering this round. They're probably going to be moving the fellowship like crazy. So I was willing to delay the Witch King slightly in favor of getting good um siege situations against the elven strongholds okay i think it's wise for my opponent to pass maybe i'm gonna who knows what i'm gonna do i think it makes sense to wait i muster again they pass again and now i go ahead and play rage of the dunlandings because i want to get these armies going so i now have quite a nice size army in moria i feel like that should be enough to take out lorian and then i get my they move again this time i hit and, which is good for the free people. And of course, they, they lose Gandalf to this two reveal and they end up in part in Dimrald Dale. And I get the Moria tile, which is a two. So, you know, a little bit of good luck for me there that they got revealed. Would I have preferred that? Yeah, I don't know what's better. I mean, turn two Gandalf is nothing they ever want to see as shadow, but sometimes that happens. At least the fellowship is now revealed. So that's good. Okay, I go ahead and move my army onto the fellowship. That's nice. And then they they hide, which is a nice use of that, a nice use of that Palantir die because otherwise you don't have playable cards. So that's a great use of that Palantir die. And I go ahead and get my armies in. The one sad thing for the free people is that they had scouts and they could have gotten a regular to Old Forest Road, but they didn't have the dice to do it. They'd prefer to get Gandalf, which I think is probably right, but it is just a little sad. All right, with my second movement, I come to South Athelion. It's a little risky because if Faramir shows up, I'm just going to have this army sitting there for a bit, but hopefully I can take out Osgiliath pretty quickly. I considered leaving one regular minus Morgul to defend, but I felt like I wasn't particularly worried about a free people military victory at this point, but maybe I could have been slightly more cautious and left one behind. I still have these units in Gore Growth, so that's why I was thinking it was worth proceeding. Okay, Gandalf the White obviously shows up. That's great for free people. And then who do you attack with this? I think in the end I decide to attack Lorien. While I might want to get Osgiliath towards um, towards war, and uh, sorry, take Osgiliath and then take out Minas Tirith, I am actually happy to get into Lorien before new power is rising, uh, uh, not new power is rising, before um, power too great gets played. So this lets me besiege Lorien if the elves end up going to war, which they can with the use of a token, then at least I've gotten Lorien under siege with only two units in it. So I'm happy with that. And I am giving my opponent the opportunity now to use a token, put the elves to war, at the end of this round and at the very start of next round, muster into Woodland Realm. So maybe that's a bad plan because this army isn't big enough to take out Woodland Realm, but maybe it is if I get some reinforcement card, which, you know, I have quite a few of them in my, in my deck. I do have Great Host, so that's an automatic hit. I'm thinking maybe I still have some chances up there. I leave one behind in Dimrald Dale to continue to harass the Fellowship and give me a reroll. All right. So 
And they did, by the way, put, put the elves to war. So I'm expecting one muster into Woodland Realm at the start of the round. I have to allocate an eye, so I do. I roll two more, and then my opponent gets a whole bunch of movement. And what's interesting here is they didn't get any musters. And when you're looking at this, it's pretty easy to see that Aragorn can be crowned this round in Minas Tirith, which is pretty tempting, especially if you have the guards of the Citadel, you have scouts. Like There are a lot of things here that keep Aragorn safe. And right now, the Southrounds and Easterlings are not at war yet. So far, I feel like the hunt has been going relatively well for the free people. So I, I certainly would be considering that, but maybe I would use this Will of the West to muster into Woodland Realm right away. As it turns out, they decide that they're just going to move the fellowship. So they move and I managed to miss with four dice. I'm only hitting on sixes. So, you know, that's fine. Um, and then, of course, I put Woodland Realm under siege right away, which is, I'm very happy that that worked out. They, My opponent wasted an action token at the end of last round and didn't even muster into Woodland Realm. I understand why they did that, because this this um, this Will of the West is great to get Aragorn. So I, I, I'm not saying it was a misplay. I was just saying the luck, the fact that they didn't, that they only rolled exactly one will of the west and no musters and no army musters was just sort of bad luck for them i guess you could consider using a ring to play a muster i guess that's something to think about but i hate to give shadow a ring um when generally this is quite quite a nice roll with that single point of movement now aragorn strider can get straight to Minas Tirith, and that's what they do so I think that's great. And now also there's no uh, Strider's going to be able to sort of power up in Minas Tirith. As soon as I see Aragorn sh showing up here, I think, okay, well, I can now that I've got the elves under siege, I can go ahead and attack. So I go into Asgiliath and my opponent plays scouts. Obviously, that's great. And they could have, this was a moment, they could have retreated to North Athelion, but they didn't because they wanted to support Aragorn. And I think that makes a lot of sense. My opponent starts here by playing Guards of the Citadel. They have not gotten Aragorn yet. So I think that's really cool. They have, what is this? This is nine hit points and I have 11 hit points. So maybe I just try and attack right away. But at the moment, Gondor is not at war. And so if that attack goes poorly for me, I am not super excited about that. Um... So I think I'm a little wary about that. And instead, I bring in the Witch King first. I like being able to cycle the combat cards. And then my opponent, of course, gets Aragorn. So that's great. And then I think what I should do. I think I decide to play Stormcrow because I want, in case the battle goes poorly, I don't want to counterattack right away. So by playing Stormcrow, especially with my opponent not having any musters, I'm able to basically just delay Gondor a bit and just take my time there a little bit more. So I move back Gondor. They lose a regular unit from Minas Tirith, which is great for me. And then they end up running away with Aragorn. And, you know, was it worth it to spend three dice this round to be able to have the threat of dead men of Dunharrow, which is a very powerful threat when you're defending, when you're trying to defend Gondor. I don't know. I think all things considered, yes, absolutely. I, I think it was great because we're, they're going to make back more than those three dice over the course of the game, for sure. Dead men of Dunharrow is very powerful. And um, they didn't really want to sprint that round. They were happy with a single movement and then get out of this, get away from this orc. And I had three eyes. They, they can take it a little bit slowly. My military isn't going so fast. So I think that was, I think that turned out to be a good use of those dice on this round, I think. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts. If, if you had, if you would have done that, would you have maybe left Aragorn there to, to try and defend more? Would you have um, reinforced Woodland Realm and just let, let Strider stay in the fellowship. That's that's certainly a possibility, but then maybe you're just rolling three, uh, five dice the whole game. Okay. I go ahead and play Nazgul Strike here. 
because now that Aragorn is no longer in Minas Tirith, it doesn't feel like an urgent target. I'm still hoping to draw Corsairs, at which point I can retreat to Umbar and put Dol, uh, Dol Amroth under siege. And I want to now reposition my Nazgul to be able to take out Lorien before my opponent draws any reinforcement cards or power too great. So I also get to put a Nazgul on Dimril Dale, and that's good. I happen to hit on the hunt, which is certainly likely given five rolls on a five, and I draw one. I don't reveal them. Obviously, it would be nice to reveal them, especially now that Strider's gone, but that's fine. Okay, so... My opponent draws a Book of Mazarble, Elven Cloaks. I get Orc Patrol and Hill Trolls. Orc Patrol is particularly important and relevant when you're playing with action tokens because one strategy with action tokens for free people is to wait until the last move, one away from Mordor, and then on their last action, move in to Mordor. Take take move, move the Fellowship so that next round you can declare in, in Mordor. But if your opponent plays... And the reason why you would do that is because it avoids things like Nazgul Strike, Nazgul Search, Cruel Weather, anything like that that requires the Fellowship to be at higher than one or higher on the movement track. But what that risks for the Fellowship is getting revealed from a card like Orc Patrol or Isildur's Bane or Foul Thing from the Deep. So as Shadow, seeing at least one of these cards early on gives me some options, particularly when we're playing with action tokens. So that's sort of a very fine level of detail, but it's something I'm thinking about and I'm happy to see Orc Patrol. Okay, my I allocate one and roll one more eye. My opponent just continues to get a whole bunch of character movement. And, you know, I'm fine with this role. I have plenty of things that I can play with my Palantirs. New Powers Rising is obviously good. Um, I don't know how quickly I'm getting into Helm's Deep, particularly with Gandalf the White sitting right here. So we'll see what happens. My opponent starts by moving. I think that makes a lot of sense because I have these two rerolls sitting right there. And if you move first, I don't get it on them. So that's good. They're safe, and now I get my two rerolls onto the Fellowship. Now, that I think that makes a pretty big difference, especially when I'm hitting on fives. So I think that was worth half a movement. And then I go ahead and get these units, the South Rune units, from South Rune to East Rune. And I don't know exactly what else I should be doing there. Maybe units from Gorgoroth or Moranon coming in to help reinforce in Gondor. That's an idea. Okay, Fellowship moves again. This time I hit with two sixes and get an I. So that's actually a two reveal. My opponent just loses the guide and then is in Druid and Forest. That makes sense. And now I want to try and make some progress on Lorien. I don't know exactly. Uh, you know, Dreadful Spells obviously can be a powerful card effect, but I want to cycle. I'm pretty sure I choose that. I do, and but my opponent beautifully plays advantageous position to cancel it. So that was just really good card play on my opponent's part. And I get no hits and they get no hits. Super friendly battle. I decide not to press because I don't think I'm taking out Lorien in one battle. I'm happy to redraw my card. And now I have Nazgul Search. That is a powerful card, particularly when Strider is not the guide because it can slow down the Fellowship. All right. I continue to harass the Fellowship because... I, I guess I wanted to might as well reinforce Lorien a little bit now that that the fellowship is so far away and I had an extra unit from Osgiliath. I do intend to eventually take Minas Tirith and if you're defending against the card Path of the Woeses, then you, even after you take Minas Tirith, you need to occupy Druden Forest, Lasarnach, and Osgiliath to cancel the effects to effectively nullify Path of the Woeses, which is a free people's card. And so it's not an entirely wasted move either if I want to, if I think that I'm eventually going to attack into Helm's Deep and Rohan will get to war, this is sort of not so bad. So I don't, I don't really mind that, even though I wouldn't prioritize it so highly normally. Okay, my opponent plays the red arrow. I love that card. Obviously, these should have been activated sooner and now we remember it. And that's just a very powerful effect. That's two and a half dice worth of an effect because you're getting one and a half points of muster plus uh, a political action muster. So that, that's a very efficient card. And I attack Lorien and I go ahead and play Great Host because 
I don't know exactly what else to play here. I like saving Orc Patrol for the potential stall, particularly because I've drawn at least one eye and there's still four dice, four tiles in here that can reveal the fellowship. So Nazgul Search obviously can also stall and I want to save Hill Trolls to be able to reinforce any combat that's not going well, probably Woodland Realm. So I decide to play New Powers Rising as the combat effect, which I do very rarely, but I just felt like probably I'm not getting into Helm's Deep because I can see that my opponent has an army muster right here. They're going to be able to bring these units from Edoras to Westmnet this turn, and I just don't know that I'm getting into I'm getting into Helm's Deep fast enough, and that's going to be a pretty buff army, particularly with companions like Aragorn who could who could be there too. Okay. They play Heroic Death, that works well, but I happen to roll three sixes, so, you know, it's good to roll sixes. To be fair, I didn't roll any sixes previous combat, so I don't know exactly what the expected value is, but it didn't seem totally unfair. I go ahead and press, and then I manage to defeat Lorien there. So, I think that probably went relatively well for me, but I did spend two dice on it, so... And, and uh, more than that, I spent some dice in, in mustering into North Dunland, and... Um, moving the army back from Parth Celebrant into Lorien. So that was a good number of dice. I think that was a fair, it felt to me fair. I'm curious what my opponent thought, but it feels pretty fair. Okay. And I drew Shadows Gather, which is obviously useful to be able to, be able to reinforce where I need to reinforce. All right. I am hoping that my opponent might, um, I don't know exactly what I was thinking here. I think I was hoping to play Nazgul Search if they moved again and then um, get my my uh, Nazgul up to Woodland Realm. I guess I play Shadows Gather because I'm thinking it's worth taking care of. It's worth taking care of Minas Tirith, and I don't particularly have other like what attacks would I make with this die if I if I play something else. So I think what I was happening there was I wanted to have something useful to do uh, with a, a useful attack to do with this die. And that's why I played Mumakil, um Shadows Gather there. Maybe, maybe that was premature and I could have, I could have just saved it, but I do like having these armies here could threaten coming into Helm's Deep the, the other direction. So yeah, I don't know that that this the, these two these two dice were a little uncertain for me. Maybe I could have done better there. And then my opponent decides to move again anyway. I have now an extra reroll because there's an Osgul there. I get two hits and I get another eye. So interestingly, that move ended up, if you look, ended up getting me. Oh no, it didn't. Because I already <laughs> I was gonna say it got me one extra corruption, but it's not true because I already had one reroll from the orc there. So the extra Nazgul didn't make any difference. Okay. Uh to reveal and Boromir shows up and my opponent moves to Osgiliath. That's okay, but I wonder why not Dead Marshes, where at least I would have to take an action to move there. One it's two from us from Osgiliath, and it's also two from Dead Marshes. So I think that's a very slight inaccuracy, but I think Dead Marshes is probably better. Okay, and again, I'm happy, I'm very happy to see that eye tile being drawn because now my Orc Patrol is feeling even better and I feel like I have good chances of stalling the Fellowship if they don't, um, if my opponent, not good chances, but some chances, if my opponent decides to use the action token. All right, so I take on Minas Tirith and... They decide to go into a siege, which is what I expected, but I was a little bit of an aggressive attack. And obviously Durin's Bane, not useful now. That's a really wasted card draw, which is sad, but Desperate Battle is a very powerful uh, combat effect, so I'm happy to see that. Okay, allocate one eye, roll two more, and my opponent gets two movement. And this is this is the sad part about not having Strider in the Fellowship yeah, you got more dice, but you don't. You're not going. Probably not going to be able to get to Mordor this round. So they start by hiding, which I think makes sense. And then I think I don't remember exactly what I was thinking here. I think I decided to try 
orc patrol here i'm not sure that makes sense I, I i think this might be a mistake why not just wait let them let them move once and then if they move successfully then play nazgul search i don't know M maybe maybe i was just being greedy and wanted to reveal them here and then they they would have to spend a ring to even move it all this round so I get a three. I'm happy to. I'm happy to um, be pulling really any non-I. Obviously, three corruption is quite a bit, and I'm making some progress against the fellowship. We remember that um, that Pippin can move one when you use the guide ability, and so uh, Pippin ends up in Lasarnach. Okay, and then they go ahead and move, which obviously is good, and I get a reroll, but still, still miss. And then at this moment, I play Nazgul Search. So now I'm sure that they cannot make it to Mordor this round. And I temporarily give up on Minas Tirith because I want to take out Woodland Realm while I have the chance. This is a moment where I, I think that I can defeat it. So I'd rather get rid of it, take care of it before um, Thrandall's Archers gets, rolled, gets drawn. Okay. So then my opponent plays King Brandsman, which obviously makes sense. It's good to um, draw more strategy cards. They have two musters, so that's good. And then they redraw Thranduil's Archers. So this is exactly what I wanted to avoid by going up there. And I make one attack against it, but I don't manage to I don't manage to defeat. It's a pretty friendly fight, and I don't manage to defeat it. And then they top decked Thranduil's Archers. So that was a one out of 19 chance that they drew that. And obviously, that pretty significantly changes that battle. I clearly, and then they drew Celeborns. So that's fine. I, I clearly have to now use Hill Trolls, and maybe even that is not going to be enough, but we'll see. So I go ahead and get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war. And then with this, I reinforce some armies and get ready to. Uh, I don't know exactly what this army in um, in North... I went from East Rune to North Rune. I think I went there with the idea that I might muster more there. But I don't know. Maybe I should have just played Hill Trolls. I think my, my thinking was there's no way that my opponent can reinforce Woodland Realm anymore. So I don't have any rush with that. I might as well get ready to attack Minas Tirith while I have army movement. And then next round, I'll probably roll some Palantirs. And so I can use the Hill Trolls more efficiently as a Palantir die instead of an army die next round. I think that's what I was thinking. I don't know what's going on with this army in West Herondor. Maybe it makes sense to um, move into Asgiliath to really reinforce Minas Tirith, but I'm just not sure yet what's happening there. All right, my opponent draws Immerhill. That's obviously always a good defensive card. And let's see, Horde from the East. I, it's a little ironic that I just moved out of East Rune, but honestly, I'm happy to use Horde from the East as a combat effect. Morgul Wound would be great if I had it sooner, but my opponent's going to be able to hide. And clearly, they're going to get in. They use um, a regular character die, and that makes sense. And then I draw a strategy card here. I think I'm, I, I think, you know, obviously it'd be great to have crew weather and, but I don't. And maybe, you know, this is an example of why didn't I save orc patrol? Then I could have potentially stalled them this round. And this is exactly the situation that it's good to have a tile drawing card because they can, once we have the same number of dice, they can use their token and then as their last action of the round, move in and avoid any chances of cruel weather. So I draw a strategy card, I think, because I'm just, I just want to try and defeat, I want to get my victory points. I feel like I can get, potentially get these victory points, particularly if I get an additional mustering card, like um, half orcs and goblin men or something like that, or Ulog High. So I should be able to take out Woodland Realm, I think. And... I want to try and find Corsairs to maybe be able to take out Dol Amroth. So I guess that's what I'm thinking. I'm not sure. Maybe it would make more sense to draw other things. My opponent moves and they're safe. And then I go ahead and play Hill Trolls, which was my plan. And then I attack Woodland Realm like this, hoping that maybe I'm going to be able to do it. I do have Deadly Strife. So, you know, that's good. My opponent has done great card play and they have day daylight there, which does a great job of 
limiting the impact of deadly strife and we get some hits and I don't press because I need to conserve my strength there. I drew another deadly strife, so that's great. Elven Cloaks goes into the pool and now I try Woodland Realm again and manage to defeat them with three regulars remaining. So what are these, you know, what are these half movements? Why do I have this force here? I don't know what that's ever gonna do. Why don't I have units from Daggerled on in North Rune in, in North Athelion instead of this? I don't know. Hard to predict the future, but maybe these units should be doing something better. Okay, um, I go to four victory points and I redraw um, orcs multiplying again. If my opponent is thinking about any sort of military victory, and I do have some open strongholds, then it's nice to have Shadows on Misty Mountain, Orcs Multiplying again for, for things like that. Okay, my opponent starts um, mustering in Rohan, and I decide to muster in Umbar because why? I guess, where else should I muster? I don't think that I'm taking Erebor and Dale. So, or maybe these guys are enough to take out Dale as is, and therefore I don't need to muster more in North Rune. So might as well muster in Umbar, and maybe I'm going to go in the hard way and just go Pelagra, Lamadon, Dolamroth, and then these units might eventually someday come show up with Corsairs of Umbar. So my opponent draws a card here. And this is really interesting because I think if you're going to use the token, better to wait, probably better to wait to avoid any risk of um, cruel weather. So this way they're going to see if I have it or not. But if I did have it and I did play it, then you have to move again. And otherwise I would have, you know, you could have avoided that stall entirely. Then again, maybe they didn't even want to risk the chance that I had Foul Thing from the Deep or um, Isildur's Bane, and therefore they just knew that they were going to be moving in advance. And so th this is also effective. If you if you really want to guarantee it, this, this is actually the way to do it. Okay, so they drew a card. That makes sense. And then... Um, I get another I get another elite in Umbar instead of I don't know what else. I guess I didn't feel quite ready to attack Minas Tirith because I don't have Nazgul there anymore. And I was I guess bluffing bluffing a I don't know a character card. Okay, so I go ahead and play Shadow is moving. I think I wanted, I, I guess this is efficient because I'm going to take Gondor, the sort of surrounding things of Gondor, but otherwise I wouldn't be ready to attack anything yet. I'm not sure. It seems like this was a little inefficient. I go ahead and give up on Corsairs because, you know, there are 13 cards left, but, you know, Gondor is now at war and I'm not going to probably be able to get there in time through Umbar. So, might as well just get prepared to attack Plugger. Okay, and now my opponent, seeing that I did not have Cruel Weather, they um, reinforce Helm's Deep, which is just an incredible, I love this, four leadership there is just really beautiful. So, um, you know, maybe that initial move out of Ford's Vizen, that really did actually make a difference. And now Helm's Deep is so strong, I just, they just successfully defended it. So if you can spend a couple of dice to entirely ward off shadow from coming there that's that can often be good all right and then of course i draw corsairs of umbar immediately as soon as i <laughs> vacate umbar and and then um let's see my opponent declares in mordor and we can see what the hunt pool is like so i would say this is a fairly fairly pleasant hunt pool you know they are at three corruption with one hobbit so effectively two corruption but i think this is okay as long as there aren't too many eyes rolled will shadow be able to get f six more victory points clearly i'm thinking minas tirith dale pelargir dol amroth those are my six and Vale of Karnan into Dale is pretty likely. That's going to be fine. Pilar Gear is pretty likely. But again, Dead Men of Dunharrow is sitting there. You know, my opponent did did draw it. And 
you know, I, there's no guarantee that I'm going to be able to, to take that. Or when I do take it, that that army doesn't immediately get annihilated. So this, this is all kind of a dangerous situation, even though I do have quite, quite a large force at this point. All right. I allocate one eye. I roll no more, which honestly is probably a good thing. The bad thing is I only rolled three attacks. So three attacks on nine dice, I guess on eight, on, on eight dice, I guess it's not that, it's not that unlikely. I would expect half. So I would expect four attacks and I got three. Okay. Um, so my opponent starts by playing, I will go alone. And what's interesting is they used a will of the West to do this instead of a Palantir. And I guess they know that they want to play other Palantirs this round. So it's a wash and it keeps this die safe. I don't know. Are you really that worried about day without dawn? I would worry more about losing more than one will of the West. I don't know. They still have, they still have all three rings. So it feels a little overly safe. I will go alone. The corruption value is, is a wash, right? They're, they're gaining, they're healing one and they're losing one. But what they get is now four tiles just turned from reveals into not reveals. So I think that's a pretty clever play. And on top of that, if you really have a lot of time, you can then use Gollum's ability to reveal the fellowship and save even more corruption. So, you know, to be clear, actually, as I think about this slightly more, it only saves these two tiles because the way it works is if you're taking one corruption, then you can use the Hobbit's guide ability first to separate them. And then Gollum immediately becomes guide. And then the reveal does not trigger. So upon greater reflection, I'm not sure that it was worth it to, to play this card in this way because you're only saving the reveal from these two tiles, just these two zeros. Everything else you're going to be able to get rid of the Hobbit. Um, well, one other thing to consider if we're doing analysis, which we are, um, candles of corpses. So candles of corpses inflict 1.5 corruption uh, on average if someone other than Gollum is guide. But once Gollum is guide, it only inflicts half a point of corruption. So you, you're sort of protecting yourself from candles of corpses with this play. And as I mentioned, you can start to use Gollum's ability like right away with this one, if you wanted to, with any of these ones. So I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's worth it. Um, I feel like now that Gondor is at war, I would be, I would probably be very happy to just muster like crazy in, in Dol Amroth and get, just get a bunch of dudes in there while I can. Okay. Well, that's what they did. And, um, now Gollum is good. I get to play on, on they went, I guess that's the other reason if, if shadow drew a red tile, but you know, maybe they drew candles of corpses. So, okay. I put on, on the went in the pool and then they move and they get a three. So they decide to reveal here and you know, they have enough movement. They're not in that big of a rush. So, you know, I think that makes sense. I wonder though, like if they had just moved three times this, this round, or like, not sorry, not three times. They moved two times and then ended up hidden because I think they're probably going to use a ring now. They're going to hide with this remaining character die and then they're going to use a ring to move a second time. But if they get revealed at that point, they're not going to have another die to be able to hide again. And so they're going to start, potentially start next round revealed. And so I just wonder if, um, again, if, if this Palantir had been used instead of the Will of the West. Um, and I guess this is just to comment on like how much pressure as shadow did I put on the fellowship from a military perspective and how much did I put from a corruption perspective? And I think this is an example of the free people really deciding to reveal Gollum here because they're just a little worried about corruption. Now, maybe, maybe it's not worth worrying about it and maybe it's better to stay hidden. I don't know. You're going to be at effectively two with Bilbo's song. So I don't know. Okay. I end up playing Morgul wound here 
and then they hide and then I get the mouth because obviously that's really good. And then I move Nazgul around the hard way, which I hate to do, but I think this is a very minor mistake. I think I should have three Nazgul here in West Herondor because if and when I want to reinforce Minas Tirith, I don't need a sixth Nazgul there. And I see that I have army dice here. Plus this uh, muster is effectively an army die because of the mouth. So, you know, and by the way, I did get the Mouth of Sauron first in Minas Morgul and then by spending a character die, I can move them to Minas Tirith. So I'm spreading out my leadership a little bit better. Okay. So I attack Minas Tirith and I play Onslaught because I have enough units and I want to be able to get through this um, siege as fast as possible. So I get one hit, they get three against me, and then I sacrifice uh, four units and get expected damage, which is two. And then I don't press any more, and my plan is to reinforce from Osgiliath. Okay, my opponent plays Bilbo's Song here, and then I move armies, and I think about moving to Osgiliath to reinforce Minas Tirith, but then I think, you know what, I think that's going to be enough to take it. Instead, let's go back to Umbar. And then my opponent will not have time to be able to reinforce Dol Amroth, potentially, potentially. Now, they muster a regular there, and then I play Corsairs of Umbar to put it under siege. And then this is the moment that Ideally, they would want to play Imrahil of Dol Amroth, but they also want to keep the Fellowship moving. And I knew that, I, I sort of anticipated that they were planning on spending a ring to do it. And so my plan at this moment is I'm going to take Dol Amroth this round and then Minas Tirith next round. So, and by doing it this way, I did avoid any sort of dead men shenanigans. So, um, okay, they move with a ring, which is what I expected. I happen to draw an eye, that's two reveal. And... Now I get to try and attack Dol Amroth. Obviously, it would be better to have more leadership there. Um, Mumakil is a great combat card, and I managed to get three hits plus one. So that's four. And, and they go down to a single regular, and, and they managed to do two back to me. So at this point, I now can see that I have two rounds of presses, to and basically 14 dice to be able to get one more six. And so I don't play a combat card this round. We all we all miss. They try and play, my opponent tries to play Amarhill of Dol Amroth here, but obviously it makes no sense to play it as shield wall when you only have one unit left, so we just take it back. And um, they say, sure, it won't matter, I imagine. Let's just remember that. Foreshadowing. Um, and... Uh, so I managed to miss on these seven dice and then they miss and then I press to the third round and I just, I have seven dice to get one hit. This time I play Onslaught because I want to make sure that I defeat it because I'm sure, I mean, I'm not sure, but it seems, well, I actually am sure that they have Imrahil of Dol Amroth and they might also have Curtain Ships. So uh, for all those reasons, I would really like to finish it this round. I played my second Onslaught. And I managed to not hit. And now I'm stuck with the situation of how many units do I lose here? I really want to kill that regular. But also Gondor is at war and it wouldn't be impossible for, for Dol Amroth to be retaken. So I end up using all four. And my thinking is I have quite a few, I have two more uh, strategy cards in the deck that let me reinforce the Ulog High and the Half Orcs and Goblin Men. And I only have 11 cards left. I can probably cycle a few with the Witch King. And so I have a decent chance of drawing into that next round if I need to. And um, maybe my opponent's not going to come get it and they'll just try and destroy the ring. So better to be efficient, make sure I defeat it. So I sacrifice all four maximum and I manage to get it. And now I'm at six victory points. I need to take Dale, take Minas Tirith, and take Pilar Gear next round. All right. My opponent, uh, I get King is Revealed. Relentless Assault is a powerful combat effect, so I'm happy to have that for the Minas Tirith battle. And Ring Wraiths are abroad, I'm very happy to see because in case I get a horrible die roll, I'm going to be able to use that to sort of mitigate my roll. So 
So, but I get a great roll. This is very flexible. I get one, two, three, four, five, six attacks. Plus I have a ring now. So I'm, I'm feeling like I have decent chances here. My opponent does not have enough dice to be able to destroy the ring. So they're going to have to come after Dol Amroth in some way. And so um, they start by playing there's another way to hide. And then I try and take out Minas Tirith first. One possibility was to sort of go after Pelargir right away and try and take Lamadon, but I'm still, I'm still, and I'm still worried about dead men. And so I want to finish Minas Tirith and then move on. That's my that's my plan. Okay, so I obviously want to cycle strategy cards because I need to get to additional reinforcements for Dol Amroth. And also Relentless Assault is just my best combat card. It's great. I can't play Durin's Bane, and obviously I'm not going to use Words of Power in a useless way here. So Relentless Assault, my opponent, again, great card play, really great card play by my opponent this whole game. Advantageous position, uh, position against Relentless Assault, so that's pretty nice. I decide to sacrifice two anyway. Maybe that's the wrong choice, but I have four units to chew through. I feel like I have a lot to spare. It seemed worth it to me. So I get only one hit and they get they get three against me so that was net five hits against me one to them obviously i don't like to see that i decide i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop here because i don't think i can finish it in one round i'd rather redraw my card and look i got ulukai so you know that was great i i knew that i had some chances at that um and that's what happens my opponent starts mustering up in lamadon and I'm worried, but what can I do about it? I draw another strategy card because if I can get another reinforcement, that'll be great. And otherwise, I can keep mustering in. Um, I can I can keep cycling them in the combats in Minas Tirith. So um, my opponent goes goes ahead and plays Dead Men of Dunharrow here to Lamadon, which I think is really cool. I don't typically see that. That was a really nice play. And then. Um, I play, I attack Minas Tirith again, again, cycling Swarm of Bats. I thought about saving it for, you know, this upcoming combat in Dol Amroth, but I want to cycle into more mustering. That's, that's my plan. So I get um, two hits this time around. My opponent gets only one. And so I press this time. I have 10 dice to roll a six and... Um, I dis I re I redrew into desperate battle. I decided to play it because if I miss, that wastes quite a lot of time, and I do want to make sure that I can get to six, uh, get to ten victory points this round, so that my opponent is forced to retake Dol Amroth, and if they fail, then I win. Um, but, and I just didn't think that I would need this anywhere else. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe I should have saved it for for the Dale attack. I don't know. Um, but I decide to play it here just to not mess around. And so I do. And then my opponent besieges me in Dol Amroth. I obviously play my reinforcement card, which is great. And now, you know, can this army defeat this army? Like as it is, no, but Imrahil of Dol Amroth. So this is just wonderful to see free people reinforcing their own stronghold from the outside <laughs> you just don't see that very much so i think this is just kind of a fun situation and it's just great that this card ended up coming into play in such a key way because they get an extra elite they get to use their dice really efficiently because they only had two musters left and they get an extra leadership there it's just it's just a very i just find that like the fact that stuff like this can happen in this game is what makes me love this game that's just really cool um Okay, so I go ahead and just hope that that, um, you know, that stronghold is going to hold out and I'm going to go ahead and take Pilar gear. Now, the other thing that I'm thinking here is I would really like to take Dale, but also Edoras, I know for sure I can just walk into. And with these two dice, I can attack Pilar gear and then with my other half movement from this die, I can... So, okay. Just to be clear the situation, I have an extra half movement right now. What should I use it for? One idea is take this unit from Druid and Forest and move it to Fold. 
and then use my character die to attack Pilargear, and then my other army movement to get into Lamadon and Edoras at the end of the round, so that at the start of next round, if my opponent does manage to retake Dolamroth, I'll have a pretty big army outside of Lamadon, and I can go ahead and retake um, Dolamroth. That's that's what my thinking is right now. So I decide. First of all, I don't need to leave a regular in Minas Tirith. If my opponent has Path of the Woeses, they need to be able to. Um, they need to. They can't move straight to Minas Tirith, so it's just the three surrounding areas. So I don't need to leave the unit in Minas Tirith. Maybe, maybe I could have. I don't know, but it didn't seem worth it to me. My opponent has no strategy cards right now. I know that they have no strategy cards, and therefore they only have a one out of fourteen chance of drawing Path of the Woes at the start of next round. You know, I don't want to risk the whole game on that, but it's close enough that I want to try and make progress. So I decide to move into fold. I'd be curious to know, would you have done that? Would you have stayed defensive against Path of the Woeses and just planned to attack into Dale? I don't know. Um, so my opponent passes. I go ahead and attack in Pilar Gear. I defeat that unit. And then, of course, my opponent, to avoid losing the game, needs to retake Dol Amroth. So I don't know exactly what the chances are here. I saved Words of Power for Aragorn, so that's going to be very pleasant. And on the first round of combat, and they don't have any combat cards to play, they get one hit which is about what you'd expect out of those dice. And then I do one hit to them, which is about what you expect from me. And now that they're down to only four combat strength, plus one with Aragorn, I actually use Ringwraiths are abroad here to cancel out Aragorn. Because if this army can survive, then, you know, I win the whole game. So that's why. I, I hate to use this as a combat card because it's so flexible for dice purposes, but I'm hoping this is the last round of the game. All right, so my opponent doesn't get any hits, um, so successful use of Words of Power, and I get one, but my opponent um, is now rolling seven dice, and they need to get effectively two sixes on seven dice, and they manage to do it. So they miss entirely on the combat roll, and they get two sixes on the leader reroll. Uh, this is very dramatic, and, um, and they say, ha! So that was, you know, that was exciting. And, um, and I get one hit back. So, you know, this is just exactly the situation that we talked about with, was it worth it to spend all those dice to get Aragorn? And then, you know, who knows what? And, and, and I think one of the things that's awesome about this game is that, um, there are a lot of different ways to play. I think it would have been very valid to keep Strider in the fellowship and to just move the fellowship along faster um, and maybe that would have been a winning strategy, but, but this way they had more dice. They were able to retake Dol Amroth and they bought a whole nother round for, for Frodo. So I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. All right. I go ahead with my last action as planned, take, um, Lamadon, take Edoras. I'm back up to eight victory points. And now I hope that my opponent does not draw Path of the Woeses because then Minas Tirith gets wrecked. And that would be sad. Okay, they don't draw Path of the Woeses, and I draw Lidless Eye. And I generally dislike this card. I don't, I almost never play it for the card effect and the, um, the combat effect. I usually just cycle it. But in a situation like this, where the Hunt Pool has some eyes in it and you're fighting against. Gollum, it can potentially make the difference. So in fact, in this situation, I'm happy. I'm happy to see it. All right. I um, put in zero eyes here. Why? I think because I want to make sure I have enough attacks against Dol Amroth to be able to defeat it. With nine units, I mean, Cairdon ships, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough no matter what. But I feel like I have some chances if I have enough attacks, maybe I should just put in the one eye and and hope to draw some eyes. But I'm thinking it's relatively unlikely. No, no it's not relatively. It sh sh um, free people could certainly destroy the ring this round if they don't get revealed. Anyway, um, I put in no eyes. I roll two. So I don't know if that was right or not. Um, but as you can see, I rolled only... On 10 dice, I rolled only two attacks. So that is very unlikely. 
and I don't know exactly how unlikely, but I think quite unlikely. And I used up um, Nazgul or Broad last round exactly, you know, to mitigate situations like this. I do have um, the Witch King, I mean, the Mouth of Sauron, and I do have a ring, so I can make a total of four attacks, but it's definitely a little dicey. All right, my opponent only gets two movement. We would expect them to get three. So, uh, you know, that's a little disappointing for them. If they get revealed, then I don't think they can make it. If they get revealed on step three or four, they, they won't be able to make it. But if they stay hidden, then it's fine. So obviously drawing a zero tile is great. And then um, I attack Dol Amroth right away. I don't know. Maybe it would have been better for my opponent to have mustered into Dol Amroth. Um, given that they don't have Cairdon's ships, maybe you think, well, one elite is not going to let me hold this. So I just want to make sure that I destroy the ring. And if any more red tiles go in, then I'm in trouble. But I don't know. Maybe I would have mustered into there first. Okay. So obviously I'm very happy to besiege it. I'm worried about Cairdon's ships, but, um, there's no... There's no cured in chips and they draw a character card. So I think that makes sense if you're trying to destroy the ring. Um, and it's good to draw it now before this combat happens. So if you get something like heroic death, then you can hold on, which is really nice. And I decide to attack Dol Amroth right here. Maybe I wanted to draw cards first. I don't know. But I think I wanted to attack uh, no matter what, but I guess I was debating which kind of die to use. Again, my opponent with this, look at this beautiful, advantageous position against Devilry of Orthanc. And also, I love that this regular unit, the, the path of this regular unit, this little orc, <laughs> went all the way. We're going to say that's the South Dunland orc. South Dunland, North Dunland, Moria, Dimroldale, Lorien. Parth, Celebrant, Eastamnet, Druidan Forest, Minas Tirith, Asgiliath, Pelargar, Lamadon, Dol Amroth. So that orc, really, that guy, really traveled the world. And then, um, and then, uh, oh, he still lived. Okay, that's nice. He lived the whole way. Oh, I'm happy for that orc. I forgot about that. I thought that orc was about to die, but I guess that orc lived the whole way. That's exciting. All right, I ended up rolling well enough that that combat didn't matter too much. And then, my opponent manages to move again, two moves not revealed, I don't, and, and no red tiles. And now they're going to be able to do it with a single more movement. They're going to be able to destroy the ring. And so it's just an exciting game. <laughs> it's just a really exciting game. Well played, really well played. Um, of course, I go ahead and use this eye here. This is, this is definitely the card that can swing the situation the most for me because currently, right now, the only thing that would stop my opponent from winning are the two red tiles. But now with this eye, if I put in enough dice, now instead of just two tiles, five tiles will stop my opponent from winning the game. So that's, that's a pretty big swing. And now it's, I think, exactly 50-50. Uh, no, uh, five out of 11... I stop them and six out of 11, they win. All right. So that's good. I left myself with two, um, Palantir dice. I, that, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have, um, I definitely should have left myself with a muster because that could have been used, um, to attack into Dale. So I don't know what I was thinking. That was a mistake. My, my, my opponent tries to move and um, they get a red tile. So I did have these red tiles in from the very beginning, um, you know, and I had two of them and the hunt pool wasn't that big. So I don't feel like this is too unfair, um, but obviously I'm very happy in the, in the final moments to uh, get my five out of 11 instead of my opponent getting the six out of 11. Um, but it was, you know, I think that just shows it was a very balanced game. And then in the end, they come and retake, um, they retake Westamnet and then I use a ring uh, which was a mistake to leave myself with that, but I use a ring to take out Dale from um, from the Vale of Karnan, and that is that is my 11th victory point, and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed that game. If you have any questions or comments, particularly if you have comments on some of the tricky strategy choices, um, please leave comments, and I hope to see you in the tournament, and I will continue to do coverage of my league games and... Um, 
and my uh, and the tournament. So the tournament will start. Uh, registration closes in two weeks. The tournament will start probably in about three weeks. Um, and you play a total of um, e- each round. It's four rounds. Each round lasts three weeks, and you play one opponent once as free people, once as shadow. And so over the course of twelve weeks, you're going to play four different people, two games each. So it's it's you know a nice pace, but it's not it's not super it's not super rushed. Um, and that's it. Hope everybody has a good rest of the day. Thanks.